So what we did was was you choose, like I said, a, a, your favorite fast food, and you and you do your pre pre production interview. I give the guys a few ideas here and there, and so we for us we decided to do like pancakes. It was like uh, ca- Cracker Barrel pancakes and kind of the little breakfast that's around it. So I thought that I would show up and then eat some of that, and then you guys would try and create your version of it, and that would kind of be it. But there's a so so, so we eat actual pancakes. Then you guys make your version of the pancakes and then you kind of create something completely different that's influenced right. by the pancakes. And that's where I just blew my mind how you guys were able to do all that. The only rule on the show, and tr- quite frankly, as you probably could tell by the eight, 10 hours that you spent with us, the only rule is that we just need to truly try to replicate the first dish that you bring us. And in this case, it was the Cracker Barrel pancakes and breakfast and sausage and everything that went along with it. And then from there, I mean, the producers know they can't tell three very different chefs with three very different points of views how to cook anything. So again, the only rule, just try to nail this one. And then from there, do whatever feels good. (laughs) But it's it's interesting. And and we'll discuss all this, but there's so much... I think I, we, we spoke about this because you and I got along really well. Like Justin and Jeremy, there's three chefs, but I almost felt like if this was like the voice or something, you would have been my mentor. <laughs> 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 but, but there's so much artistry in being a chef. Mm-hmm. Anytime you create something out of nothing, I consider that to be art. And whether that's painting a picture or whether it's performing a dance or a wrestling match or uh, making a dish, it's pure art. So you then took, like, for example, this pancake idea and then created this completely other amazing five-star meal out of it. Mm -hmm. So how did you create this? Because what exactly did you you explain what you made? So it was pancakes, sausage, and eggs. This is what we're dealing with here, which then you turned into. So we also can't forget the apples because. Oh, the apples, right. The fried apples, yeah. The fried apples. So what I did is when I think pancake. So uh, let me back up a little bit. So every, every chef has their, their own point of view, their, their own message that they want to tell through their food. Um, similar to you being Chris Jericho in a wrestling ring and then Chris Jericho at home. So there is this parallel that's happening, but they are two kind of, I don't want to say different versions, but the way I think at home is very different how I think in my kitchen. You operate differently. So it's this parallel road that runs together that ultimately creates this amazing duality of who we are as a person. Mm -hmm. I developed my cooking style and I like whimsical. I like playful. Um, and I love pasta making. So for your dish, when I thought pancake, it went from pancake to then in my head flat, which then went into my head as pasta, which then went into my head as one big sheet of pasta, which then turned into, okay, now let's start to layer in the sausage flavors. So instead of using sausage, I'm going to use all the fresh herbs the fresh version of the herbs that you find in sausage, which are typically dry, throw those into the pasta, make a beautiful sheet, create this pancake looking experience. And then (laughs) the greatest thing for me with pasta, I love carbonaras and egg sauces. So I was like, okay, well, let's confit an egg yolk in some of those dried sausage spices and then make this beautiful round calvados, which is an apple brandy cream sauce with shallots and thyme. So I know it sounds... For me, it was a very straight line on how to get there, even though it probably sounds like a very windy road. <laughs> but once again, because that's the way that you interpret these sort of dishes. When I think of, of like his fast foodies and there's three chefs and, and I'm still thinking it's going to be three people in white professor out cloaks and then the big long white chef's hat. <laughs> but you go in there and like, like you were wearing what you're wearing right now, like kind of a hat on backwards. There was kind of got tattoos and they're all looking cool. And I was like, this is like chefs are like rock stars here <laughs> in, in this realm. Yeah, we definitely took on, and I don't know what happened. I think it's the, the medium of TV that all of a sudden you threw chefs, which are typically hidden and inside and, you know, back into a kitchen and you throw them on TV and realize that most chefs have a personality. And most chefs want to share that love of food with as many people as you can. So even if I can't cook for everyone or they can't come to my restaurant, at least I get to showcase what I can do via television, which ultimately was like this massive 
change where we are now exposed to so many different kinds of chefs and not just the ones that were meant to be placed in front of us to represent all chefs. Right, right. Talk a little bit more about fast foodies. When, when um, I, I kind of went through the list of previous you know guests and one of my original ideas, I love a good burger and fries and I'm seeing that you had James Vanderbeek burger and fries from In-N-Out Burger, which you won. Yeah. So I want to know what did you create from the In-N-Out Burger when you had to make your own dish? Coincidentally, pasta. And I don't make pasta every, every, <laughs> I make it maybe two times a season. And so with James, he gave us the In-N-Out Burger and fries, but he also is trying to eat a little bit more healthfully. Mm -hmm. So not a lot of dairy. And we always eat so much of like the meat burger right at the top. So we're eating ground beef. So the last thing I want to do is add more meat onto the next round. So for me, I like to scale it back, take out the main protein, but somehow incorporate the flavors. And so for him, I did an extruded pasta version, which is the opposite of what I did for you, which is a rolled egg pasta dough. So extruded homemade spaghetti with a vegan of all things, vegan cream sauce with like all these dehydrated roasted mushrooms with herbs and pickled onions and tomato powder. And then I got the beef flavor just by using a little bit of beef fat. So no actual of the meat product, toasted up some breadcrumbs, made that all crunchy and crumbly over the top. So it ate like a burger. 